another wonderful property. Oh, we've got to get over here. Here's what I'm going to show you. Let us take an enormous cake of ice, big one, and put a wire around it and put some weights on the wire. Weights. Now you know what will happen. The pressure of the wire being very great, because the area is very small and the load very large, the wire will cut into the ice because it melts it. Now as the wire cuts into the ice, the ice is really melted under the wire. Then the water that results from this melting ice creeps up on top of the wire and freezes again. I'll show you how we do that here, and you can do it for yourself because it's a wonderful thing. Here are the, is the wire put around, and let me turn this around perhaps, another way. You can see the two weights here hanging and the wire. And now the wire will embed itself into the cake of ice and take such a shape in turn, in due course, such a shape. And I always ask students, what is the shape of this curve that the wire takes? And I'm going to give you a secret. It is a curve of least energy, and I think it is a catenary, C-A-T-E-N-A-R-Y, which is quite like the curve that the big transmission cables and chains hang in when they hang freely. Now, what's the essential thing to be said? When the water that results from the cutting wire refreezes, the ice is stronger in this place than elsewhere. Is not that an amazing thing? Now, remember, I said that the pressure of the wire melted the ice. What does that remind me of? Have you not made a snowball out of snow, soft and wet, and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I have some ice here. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, and what happens? The snow melts under the pressure. It melts. And then when you let up the pressure, doesn't it freeze? So rather than having a snowball of snow, you've got really an ice ball made of snow that was melted by the pressure and then refroze. Look at here. No water will overflow. But now, much more enchantment in this exercise. I have an after-dinner trick for you. Notice I said trick. I never like to use that word because none of these things are really tricks. They are engagements with nature, and there's no trickery at all. Question. I have here some ice in my drinking glass, and I hand my, my neighbor at the table, my visitor, a little piece of string about three inches or four inches long, and I say to him, with such things as are on the table, get out a piece of ice. Get out a piece of ice. Secret. Watch it. I'm going to wet the piece of string, just wet it, and lay it on that piece of ice in there, and then I'm going to take the salt cellar and sprinkle some salt on there, and then I'm going to let things rest. I'm going to let things rest a little while. Now what is happening? The salt has depressed the freezing point so that some of the ice is melting. That ice which melts, that is the water from it, now refreezes, and if you will give it your strict attention, I think you will see that the string is fixed to the ice. Watch it, watch it, watch it, there it is. And I say, that is a wonderful thing to contemplate. Indeed, I'm so enchanted by it, I'm going to do it in this big dish, which is filled with ice, and see if I can't lift all of it out. Now, what are we saying here? The strange behavior of ice and water. Now, while that is taking hold of its affairs, you see nature often requires, and nature, remember, when I say nature, we must spell it with a capital N. Nature. Nature sometimes takes a little while for her actions to occur. Let me try this. Watch. Uh-oh, I'll let it go a little. But while we're waiting, it should be obvious to all of us that these bits of knowledge which have been gathered up over the centuries have been done, discovered, explored, inquired into, arrived at by strange and uncommon men. And I want to look at 
some likenesses of some of these, and we should pay them tribute constantly for the great industry that they gave the subject. Let us look here. Ludwig Boltzmann. Boltzmann. Let us look at that man. Incredible. And now I would say to you, should you go to Vienna where he was a professor, there in the quadrangle at the university, you see a bust of, of Boltzmann. And I remember coming upon it and thinking, the man is nearly breathing. It was so alive. Let me try my ice thing. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Uh-uh. I'm in a little trouble, but there it is. There it is. The ice fixed to the ice because the salt melted some and then the water refroze. Let us take another look here. Sadi Cano, a young Frenchman, a French engineer, who investigated the properties of heat and temperature, much to his credit and to the credit of France. Or James Watt. Now we all associate the name James Watt with the steam engine. And what is the story? As a little boy, he saw the kettle on his mother's cook stove popping around, at least the cover of it, and was led to contemplate the consequences of this. Or, here is a wonderful one. James Prescott Jowell, whose father was a brewer, and he was led to contemplate some of the properties of heat and temperature, and indeed made a wonderful investigation. He went to the falls in France known as Chamonix with a long thermometer, and there he measured the temperature of the water at the top of the falls and the temperature at the bottom, suggesting the idea that work had been done and the temperature of the water had been raised. And now, for boys and girls everywhere, we must not escape taking a look at young James Clark Maxwell, the young Scot, who, <coughs> whose fondness, let me say, was playing with tops in his later years. So do you see, here was a great intellect whose diversion from his intellectual labors was playing with spinning tops. And I hope you engage in the same, and I shall see you once more.